I've been using Visual Studio Code and Cursor for my Vibe Coding projects, and I use both of these on my Mac. I like Visual Studio Code because it's been around for years and it's really popular with developers, but it has a little bit of a learning curve. Now, if you're not as familiar with Cursor, it's basically the most popular AI Vibe Coding tool in the space right now. And it's actually a fork of Visual Studio Code. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer it. I'm basically getting everything that I get inside of Visual Studio Code, but with a couple of different features built specifically for new Vibe coders like me. Now, Visual Studio Code is of course free to use if you're a coder and you can pretty much work away on your projects. But you will need to take out a subscription to Copilot if you wanna start using AI and start or inside of Visual Studio Code. Cur for Cursor, you will need to uh, try the hobby version, but you're not gonna get very far with that. You're probably gonna to need to use the pro version, which costs $20 per month. And for that, you get access to all of the AI agents. Now, because I'm working on a few different Vibe coding projects, it wasn't long before I upgraded to Ultra, and this gave me access to 20 times usage for OpenAI, Claude, Gemini, and more. And it actually worked out a lot cheaper than using Visual Studio Code in the long run. So here is a Visual Studio Code or VS Code for one of my five coding projects. And you can see here that I can select from Agent, Ask, and Edit. Cursor works pretty much the same way. And I get access to GPT 4.1, uh, some premium models, and some other models. And that's because I took out a subscription uh, to Copilot. That'll cost me $10 per month once my trial expires. This was quite useful uh, for using the chat to fix issues inside of my Vibe coding project. But if I head over to Cursor, you can start to see how it's a little bit different. So I get access to Agent, Ask and Manual, much like VS Code. However, I also get access to something called Max Mode, which enables me to get far faster responses from AI. And I get access via Max Mode to Gemini 2.5 Pro, as well as Claude for Sonnet inside of Max Mode. And I can also turn on something called Auto, which basically switches between the different modes to save me a little bit of money uh, on my token usage. So you don't get something like that inside of Visual uh, Studio. Uh, I also preferred Cursor because it was able to open up multiple different new chats. So this isn't possible in the vanilla install of Visual Studio Code. You can only have one chat with your AI agent. Whereas with Cursor, I was actually able to open up three different chats uh, and start working with three different agents to fix issues inside of my Vibe coding projects. Uh, and I can, of course, access my chat history uh, to review the previous chats. Now, inside of Cursor, I can work on not one, but three different chats at any one time. And this is a real time saver. Uh, so I can just simply create up to three different chats in different boxes. And I found this was really useful because I had a long list of things to fix inside of my Vibe coding projects. And I was able to get uh, the AI models uh, to fix them all in tandem. Whereas uh, with Visual Studio Code, I was only able to do or open up one chat, so it was a little bit slower. The other reason why I prefer Cursor is it has some specific tools or functionality that are built for Vibe coders. So if you go to Cursor and then you go to Settings, you'll see it has a cursor settings section. So I'm just gonna close out of this chat so I can just talk through some of the uh, features that are useful for Vibe coders. First up, you can go to rules and memories. If you turn on generate memories, cursor will start to use its AI to learn from the conversations you have with it uh, about your code base, about your project, and about your PRDs. And it'll tailor its future responses uh, in such a way that it'll do more of what you want and not what it wants. Well, I didn't really see anything like that inside of VS Code. Um, and you can, of course, review uh, any of the memories to accept or reject them. So I'm just going to accept these. Uh, and if you want, you can actually click on Show Memories and start to remove or delete memories from your uh, Vibe Coding project. Uh, you can also uh, write custom rules or custom prompts. Uh, inside of Cursor, so it wasn't possible for me to do this directly inside of VS Code. So for example, sometimes I found these AI tools will go down a rabbit hole and start making huge changes to my project and then I have to restore everything from GitHub and undo everything. Uh, so I added a custom rule saying you must ask for confirmation before executing on a task that I haven't explicitly called out. And I also told it it needs to talk to me like I'm a junior developer because uh, I don't have a huge amount of development experience and avoid major code changes without my approval. And I wrote a number of different rules like this for my Vibe coding projects. And even turned on include a cursor.rule file where I set custom rules for how to deploy my projects to GitHub. It wasn't possible for me to create these types of rules and memories 
inside of VS Code, at least not inside of the vanilla version. And I found taking time to customize my rules and memories uh, did save me a lot of headaches later on. Cursor also has something uh, called background agents. Background agents are basically AI agents that work when you don't. And I use these for QA and bug issues. Basically, I connected Cursor uh, to my GitHub instance, and then I was able to use these background agents to start uh, fixing issues while I was doing something else. So earlier on, I was working on a project. I pushed it live, and then I put this prompt into my background agent, check project for bugs and quick fixes. And while I was working on something else, uh, Cursor reviewed the entire project in GitHub, uh, found a number of uh, code issues and some other issues on the project, fixed them, and then pushed them to the GitHub main branch. I don't think VS Code has anything like this, at least not for Vibe coders. Now, if you are going to use background agents, do check that your changes were actually pushed to the GitHub main branch. Uh, for a couple of these agents, I found it didn't push the changes properly or it pushed them to a GitHub fork, which means they didn't go live on my Vibe coding project uh, site. But it's still a bit of a time saver and you can actually bookmark these background agents with your mobile phone and you can do code fixes on the go, which I thought was quite clever. Now, if you've been using VS Code for some time, it's not a huge job to navigate over to Cursor. Like I said, it is a fork of VS Code and you can even import all of your extensions and settings. Just go to Settings, VS Code Settings, and Cursor will give you an option uh, to import everything, uh, provided you've logged in to GitHub. And as you can see, if I go to the Extensions section, it has all of the same extensions that I can find in the VS Code Marketplace. The way Cursor and VS Code handle models uh, does differ somewhat. So as I mentioned previously, if you subscribe to Max Mode, which is $200 per month, you'll have more than enough tokens for your Vibe coding projects. And I was able to accomplish quite a bit with Max Mode. And then I was able to turn on or off all of these models. So currently Cloud4 Opus is turned off, so I'm just gonna turn that on. Uh, and if you have an API key for Cloud or Anthropic, you can paste that in here and use that instead. But I, I actually found it's cheaper to use Max Mode rather than using my own API keys. Uh, it's a little bit different inside of uh, VS Code. So you will simply click on Manage Models, and then you can pick which model you want to add uh, inside of VS Code and turn them on or off. If you take out Copilot subscription for $10 per month, you will get access to some of the premium models. But I did find I didn't get as many tokens as I got uh, with Cursor. So I guess Cursor are really trying to get people or onboard people into using um, their Vibe coding tool. Now, I did prefer two things about VS Code over Cursor. So firstly, I found the interface was a little less cluttered, perhaps because there weren't as many AI tools to overwhelm a new Vibe coder like me. Secondly, I found VS Code was a little bit better at deploying my projects to GitHub and making sure that a build took place successfully on Netlify. Basically, once you install the GitHub and Netlify extensions in VS Code, it was able to keep track of everything inside of Terminal and then fix any deployment and build issues pretty much automatically. I wasn't quite able to replicate this workflow with Cursor and I found myself copying and pasting build errors and build logs and then heading over to Cursor and pasting them in the chat and asking Cursor to fix them automatically. So I was able to build my projects or should I say deploy my projects faster with VS Code over Cursor. Although perhaps that goes down to how I'm currently using Cursor and what extensions I have installed. However, that said, I'm happy to continue using Cursor, particularly Ultra Mode for my Vibe Coding projects. And of course, if you'd like to get more Vibe Coding tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to the playlist. And do let me know in the comment section below whether you're using VS Code or Cursor.